we're joined here with uh, Nicholas St. Pierre, and it was at this time two years ago that Nicholas uh, came to Riverside, only uh, at that time you showed up here as Natasha, a transgendered woman, and uh, you came and, and met with me, and I had no idea uh, your background, and uh, God was working in your life and really stirring your heart uh, to him. Tell us a little bit about what was going on in your life uh, back then. Well, I was an atheist for most of my life. And I had discovered that actually the devil exists. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the, the, the turning point. Uh, God has answered the prayer. Uh, I made the, a prayer that I, uh, the unbeliever's prayer. I don't know if somebody heard about that. But anyway, I said, if you exist, God, yeah. show me the truth. So uh, he, and he showed me in a dream uh, that was r super realist. You know, I woke up and I still saw the, the face of the devil. And it was so crazy um, that, yeah, after that, I was like, there is a God. And then that uh, snowballed into the, the time where we met, mm -hmm. where I was actually ready to be baptized. That's kind of my, my last step. You know, I just wanted to see a pastor and it happened to be during COVID where everything was locked down and, yeah. and shut. And so to your church, thank God, stayed open. Amen. And so I, I came here that Sunday morning. And uh, my question to you was, uh, was basically, should I, I want to be baptized, but you have to know first that I'm not a woman. I was born a male. And then you were like, whoa, <laughs> you know, and, um, and then I, I expected that. So anyways, so you, but you prayed with me. You tell me, you told me like, I should, um, uh, the Lord will ex uh, answer my question. So should I be baptized as Nicholas or Natasha? And I had a pretty much convicted already that I should be Nicholas again, mm -hmm. but it was a bit scary. So I wanted to speak to a, hum a real person yeah. first, right? Yeah. So that's why I came to you. Yeah, and, and that was the thing we talked, and, and my biggest heart for you was, I, I just want to see you coming now as you give your life to the Lord and just begin to grow in Jesus and allow him to direct you. And, and I knew that the Lord would direct you, and it wasn't long after that you know, you came on a, on a Wednesday night and you said, I'm going to live uh, as I was born. I want to live yeah. as, as Nicholas. And you were, you were presently working uh, a job for, for six years as, and, and uh, working there as Natasha. Nobody knew. You began to share with people in your work that yes. uh, you're actually Nicholas. You began to, uh, you know, see that change happen and nobody had any idea. And so yeah. amazing. So tell us about that, that kind of transformation that the Lord was doing in your life during that time. Well, like you said, um, I, at my job, nobody knew I was uh, my past as a, as a b being born male. And what happened is uh, the Lord had told me I, after we met, uh, I prayed and he, I, he convinced me that, you know, I should be male. And he said, and basically what I've got from him is you ha tell your coworkers. So the next day, it was a Thursday. I just went to work and I spoke to my coworkers and I told, I told them, you know, uh, uh, I told him, well, I was, you know, I was, when I was a little boy, you know, I was born a boy, you know, like, and then something like that. And they're like, huh, what? And then I said, yeah, it, yeah, I was born a boy. And then they're like, no way, no way. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> like, and I, and then I didn't, I couldn't tell them I was going to become back a man right away because it was already a shock. And when you have, a, yeah, I have, to, I had delayed about four weeks before I told them now I'm coming back to become a male mm -hmm. because already they didn't know that I was a, you know, my background. So uh, anyway, that was so come clean, come truth, right? So it's been awesome just to see how God's, uh, you know, just done such a, a work in your life and just your, your conviction, your heart for the Lord. You're out uh, sharing your faith, sharing your story with people. It's awesome. Uh, what's some advice that maybe you would just share to people that may be watching this who themselves are in a, in a situation where they're really struggling with their own identity? And looking at some of these alternatives that that doctors are so ready to do now for people, you went through um, reassignment surgery uh, many many years ago, and uh, you seen kind of the effects of that. Just what what are some things you'd want to share with people that are struggling through that themselves? I would I would suggest to be um, to delay to delay doing these decisions. In my case. Um, I did surgeries, uh, breast implant, and sex change later on, and um, it's uh, it's something that has. Well, I, I have to face it every day. 
Mm -hmm. I can't, it cannot be reversed. Uh, you sign document, the doctor distances themselves as much as possible from you as a patient. So they encourage you to get the surgery, but they say, you know, whatever happened, you're on your own. Um, psychiatrists, um, they, they, they were very superficial. I had one appointment, one hour appointment for six months because that's the requirement. You have to be followed by psychiatrists for six months. So if you see the psychiatrist once one hour per month, that counts for six months. Uh, and now it's even more easy. They make it more easier now. That was 20 years, uh, almost 20 years ago. So, so um, really uh, delay these things because uh, your feeling may change about that identity that you think you may have. Um, and I would suggest also for the parents, and it's not easy because now they put legislation in place that makes it difficult, but you know what? Uh, the Lord is clear that we're either male or female, you know, we're not, there's no in between. Um, but yes, it's true, there's comfort zone in each mm -hmm. of the gender. You can be more comfortable yeah. or less comfortable, but it's something that you need to learn to become comfortable with your, with your, uh, your sex, you know, yeah. male or female. And your parents can guide you. Uh, there's people who loves you that can guide you in that. And it's not a doctor who barely knows you or, or a psychiatrist who barely knows you. They see you just once, uh, once a month for six, six times, like six hours of your life. And it, it, then it, it changes your whole life. Yeah. And if I may add one more thing, when I was in that state, um, nobody, like what I just said now would not have convinced me back then. Okay, so I wanna, I, I'm not expecting people to listen to this and be convinced. If you are having a gender dys dysphoria, if you are have, uh, struggling with your identity, um, it, is, uh, it is a difficult place to be, but, it's, but there is hope, okay? There is hope because the Lord has taken me out of this in, in one moment, and I didn't even ask him to heal me. And that's the, mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the amazing thing. Once after I met you, yeah. and that Wednesday, okay, I, I prayed to the Lord. I was in my bedroom. I prayed to the Lord and I asked him, I said, Lord, I want to be baptized. I know I was born a male. I just be brutally honest with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm scared. I don't know if I'm going to lose my job. I don't know if I'm going to lose my friend. I've, done, I've lost friends before, before because of that identity. I've lost um, opportunities. I've lost time. I even got HIV okay, mm -hmm. through all this. And I, I'm brutally honest with you, too. You know, there's very many, many risks in that life, that lifestyle that, we're, that you, you, you want to perhaps enter with. And it's not glamorous like they can show it. It's not. Uh, you always end up living kind of covertly. Right. Um, yeah. Anyways, so the thing is, I was brutally honest with the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm scared, but you know what? I trust you, and I know it's going to be all right. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be all right. And I was, in, I was weeping and weeping, man. Mm -hmm. And then, then I, I finished my prayer, you know, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to become Nicholas again, yeah. you know? And I finished my prayer, I wipe, wipe my tears like that, and I look around my room, and what do I see? I see my, uh, I had a, a female like trench coat jacket and my and some some uh, female shoes there and my purse on next to me and I'm like I look at this stuff and I'm like what <laughs> I really I don't like that stuff what is this doing in my house yeah and it's like I don't want this I want this out right now from my house I want to get gar garbage and I was like wait a second what am I thinking yeah. is that different I'm like man this is so different this is like I never thought like that and then wow. I was like I just started weeping, weeping. I was like, went back into my knee, on my knees and pray. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He healed me. And so the thing is, now, two years after that, yeah. what happened is I realized that all my childhood and all this time I had these thoughts, it was a spiritual attack that was continuous and it's called spiritual harassment. Mm. And when I realized that, that it was afterward, not at the time. So I thought it was like just, wow, it's a miracle. And it was a miracle, but the miracle is when Jesus get into your heart yeah. and live in you as his temple, you know what happened? What happened is the demon must be moving away, moving off. And then, then the, pff, you're free. Yeah. And you're Amen. free indeed. That's it. <laughs> so that's the, that's the story. Love to hear that. And uh, that's the, the beauty of this. You'd mentioned how 
uh, you know, doctors are, are given direction. They don't know these, person, uh, these persons. And we know uh, that we are created in God's image. He's the one that knows us. And true Amen. peace and joy comes in living for him yes. and living his way. And yes. uh, that's what you've been experiencing now. And I love to hear yeah. that. And I'm, I appreciate you sharing your story here. Uh, with us, Nicholas, and we uh, pray and trust that that's going to be a real blessing and encouragement um, to others, too. So thank you. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah, Thank you for having me here.